Hi there. This is the pilot episode of Shift's unnamed video series. I'm Cynthia Kluski. And I'm Sarah Mayer. And in this series, we are going to be discussing different marketing and communication topics. So today we're talking about something that's really fundamental, um, how to write. In particular, how to write when you're having trouble writing the thing you want, you need to write. So um, the idea here is that it seems the more important a piece of writing is to you, it could be anything, it could be like a blog post or, or copy for an ad or um, maybe uh, copy for a web page, a brochure, or maybe just a, a, an email even that's um, an important email to you. Mm -hmm. um, the harder, the more important it is, the harder it uh, can often be to get started. Sarah, this happens to you? Uh, yeah, all the time. I think the email one is probably uh, the most popular one for me. <laughs> I get stuck a lot of times because email is one of those communications that we do all the time. Uh, but you know, especially right now, we're using it even more probably to communicate. So uh, it's, uh, you know, every word matters, it feels like. Do you think of it as like as a writer's block or do you think of it as something like that's a whole thing that there's like almost like an industry of books about, but do you think of it as writer's block or do you think of it as something else? I don't think of it as writer's block because in my mind, writer's block is something that it takes, you're stuck in it for a while, I feel like, and you have you're trying so many things to get out of it. With, with something like an email or even a blog post, I feel like it's short term. And um, if you just start writing, that's often, a, you know, the solution. Right, right, right. The, the trouble with like, I think that so many times the, if there's something that's important, and again, it could be, um, it's often for me, a, like a thing like a blog post or some work thing, something that's going to have like a public a life in public, well, hopefully at some point. Um, and often when I have the idea for a, a blog post, I'm all, all of a sudden like, this is the, gonna be the best blog post ever. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the thing that's gonna, um, it's gonna help the company in these ways. It'll, people that read it, they're gonna find it useful. Maybe it'll be the start of something. And the bigger it build it up in my mind, then it can often be that it's that much harder to begin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put a lot of pressure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like the, the being afraid of be, doing a bad job with it or other people re reacting to it or reading it in different ways, like those things feed in. Or maybe I like have the idea, but I'm not real clear about how to get there. Um, and, or like this is going to be the thing that finally people are going to realize, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> you know? Or somebody else has already written it and I just have, don't happen to know. Those kind of things feed in, I think. Yeah, I think what you're describing there is uh, imposter syndrome at the end there, right? Isn't that what that is? Yeah, it's definitely a characteristic. Um, and then sometimes there's like a piece of it where there's almost a self-sabotage, where like if I wait and wait and wait and don't do it and don't do it, and now I've only got an hour. Well, I'm gonna, I'll get it done. And I, oh, I, I, all of a sudden the pressure has built, so I'm writing. Um, and I often wonder then if it's like that was a way of, there's so little time to make it good. Well, I have now I know it's not gonna be that great. Mm -hmm. So I have I have given myself an out for not being awesome. Yeah, though so sometimes it can work in the other way. Well, at least for me, where if I hold off, I hold off and then I've given myself a limited time, that deadline for some reason helps to uh, make something better. It mm -hmm. just put, puts me under that pressure and I'm, maybe I like that deadline and that pressure and I just get it done there at the last, the last minute. But then I always wonder, well, could it have been better if I would have uh, taken more time with it and had more revisions? And, and so I'm always sort of left wondering. Right. So you said a thing earlier that sometimes you've had this before and you have a way of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what do you do? Well, I think that I just start writing and I, no matter what it is, I just, just get it out and just start writing and try not to edit it until whatever the thoughts or ideas that I have about that particular thing are all out. And then I kind of go back and look at it and, you know, see where I'm at, how much <laughs> revisioning and editing I have to do on top of that. But just, just the act of starting, um, once you get, get to that, you know, your desk or, or wherever it is you're going to be writing, um, just starting is, is really like 90% of the battle. 
I think that's really the thing. This whole idea that, I mean, a lot of writers have, you know, go by this credo of um, just butt in chair. Just get your butt into the chair. Just get your fingers on the keyboard or your hand on the pen or, you know, your, your hand on the paintbrush if you're going to paint the words. I don't know. Um, but just kind of get, get started. And, and for me, this kind of goes back to some writing advice that I um, read from Anne Lamott, who is um, uh, she's a novelist. She writes nonfiction and, and she teaches writing. She teaches creative writing in particular. Um, and is a great, um, you know, a great advocate for everybody being able to write, you know, writing should not be reserved just for the elite. And so um, when I was first trying to write, I mean, I've been writing nonfiction for, you know, since college, I, I had a whole career around technical writing, but I wanted to write fiction and I was very stymied by it. And so I, I read her book, it was recommended to me by many people, her book, Bird by Bird, fundamental to a lot of um, people embarking on a creative writing career. And I've, I've reread it several times since. So Bird by Bird, who's, I don't have a copy here. I, was, I, want, I would love to have it as a prop, but um, I must have lent it to somebody who I hope then, I hope it changed their life. But, so I, um, but in Bird by Bird, she, um, she, is an, she advocates for a shitty first draft. And I think it's so important. Um, the idea is that if we're worried about all of these things or we have these weird anxieties and fears about doing things well, that if that's what's holding us up, then stop worrying about doing it well. Just write, in fact, almost intentionally write a terrible thing because just the act of getting started and getting some things on there, then you can start to make it better, but you can't make it better until it exists in the first place. So she liked to, um, I looked up some quotes, uh, perfectionism, this is Anne Lamont, she says, perfectionism is the voice of the oppressor, the enemy of the people, it will keep you cramped and insane your whole life, and it is the main obstacle between you and your shitty first draft, and your shitty first draft then is the thing, and I, um, I believe in this so, so much, and it sounds like that's, you, you also have found this in your world. Yeah, I mean, frankly, probably my second and third draft are shitty too, let's be honest. Um, but, you know, I appreciate her honesty about it. And, uh, you know, in, in the name shitty first draft, it kind of takes the pressure off of it. And then once you realize that you're free and empowered to just write poorly a little bit, just to get it out there and get started, um, you know, that, that does take, take the edge off of it and, and make it, uh, fun, which, you know, writing it, most of the time, it should be fun. You know, you should enjoy what you're putting out there and, um, you know, enjoy delighting whoever's reading it. Mm -hmm. I think there are, there are a lot of times I do, I mean, if you're drawn to it, there's people that will say, if you can, in your life, if you can make your career anything but being a writer, do that. <laughs> um, and there's other, I forget whose quote it is, that writing is easy, you just, um, you just take a pen and open a vein. Something along those lines. Um, yeah. uh, but, um, but writing for work, like those of us who, um, who are in a, a creative professional field um, or who need to communicate in well for work in some way, um, I think that, when, that the, get, the process of getting through from your muddled thoughts to something that's very clear and really helps people or communicates or says what you need said and achieves the end that you need it, like that there is such a great sense of fulfillment. So I guess that's, I guess that's the fun of, the, of it. Finding just the right phrasing, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I also think that um, the idea about just sitting down and, and you know, uh, starting to write is what they teach you when you're, I mean, in college, that's what we did. We would spend the whole entire class just free writing and, um, you know, you you just got a lot done. You got a lot of words on the page and um, they weren't always great, but that rhythm of getting into it, I think uh, helps helps you to get to that when you're gonna, what's that final product gonna be? You don't know when you start and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. And it doesn't have to be perfect and you can continue to edit it. Um, and you can have other people help you edit it too. I'm pretty sure I've sent you my shittiest subdrafts <laughs> that you've helped <laughs> me clean up. <laughs> well, and, and it goes both ways. We, you know, you always want, always, everyone wants and needs an editor. Everyone doesn't always want an editor, but you always need an editor yeah. because um, someone else will be able to see your, your, what you're trying to say in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I really do enjoy editing. I probably enjoy editing almost, almost more than writing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love 
finding, you know, helping someone else find the, find the nut of what they were trying to say. And I think that a lot of times when you and I go back and forth on a thing, that that's actually what happens, that there's a, you've got part of the idea and just getting something down is like part of like, maybe like in sculpting, like when you sculpt, you are actually kind of carving away all the things that aren't the sculpture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting to think about writing because I think a lot of times you think of it as a, a solitary uh, practice, but it's better when you have, you know, other people to bounce your ideas off. And like you say, like other people see things in what you're trying to communicate that maybe, you know, you're just not fully getting that idea out there and they can help you complete it. Um, that's probably why they have writer, you know, teams of writers on shows. It's, it's about that, you know, working together and uh, strengthening each other, strengthening each other's work uh, is, is always very helpful. Um, even though sometimes even getting that bad first draft out, it, you know, like sitting down and writing, I have a, my, one of my tools that I use is to use bulleted lists because then I'm freed of the idea of even trying to make a sentence. Like it could be a phrase. I can, ha I can mix phrases and sentences and, you know, groups of thoughts. Um, it's just getting, being able to put the things in there. And if they're in bullets, it seems like it's easier than to say, oh, they're in the wrong order. So you can sort of see it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well then it, it uh, breaks away from rules too. There are no rules in bullets. <laughs> you know, you can not have a complete sentence. You can, you can have a period at the end if you want, whatever, whatever you need to do. Uh, so I think that that's probably a good technique. And it all, you know, feels like an outline too. Some people are helped by an outline. Uh, when they start writing, just to just get the broad brush of what they want to talk about and how it might flow and and you can, you know, move things around in an outline. So sometimes that's helpful for people uh, as well. Right. In fact, even just like working out for ourselves, like what things we want to talk about in this video and what should we even ask ourselves? What are we trying to say? We used a, we used a bulleted list. Sure did. They come in handy. <laughs> What, uh, what do you think, you know, we, we often have clients that, that want to write more, that, you know, they have an expertise that they want to share and they know there's an audience out there for that content, but they really get stuck. Um, and maybe it's that pressure of writing the perfect thing because it feels like a lot's writing on it. Um, but what is the um, result of not writing that social media post or, or not writing that blog post? What, what happens when you don't? So. Oh, uh, well, so, I mean, that kind of gets at what are the stakes at hand. So, um, I mean, there can be less great content out in the world. Um, and when I say great content, people, I think one of the things that holds some folks back, holds me back sometimes too, is like other people have already talked about this. Why should I? Why should I? Who am I to say something, for example, or what? It's already been covered. Um, but what I also, what I feel very strongly is that each, each person has their own perspective, has their own story to tell or their own truth to share. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, holding back from, from doing whatever the writing is, is in a way um, holding yourself in and keeping your, yourself from doing whatever the great thing is, whether it's personal or for work or, you know, a community kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big part. What do you, what do you see is missing? Yeah, I mean, I, it would automatically result in less content in the world. Um, I think that, you know, from, from my own personal experience, um, you know, not writing then means I'm being less creative. And um, if I'm not doing that shitty first draft, whatever, if I'm, you know, it could be very, the result could be a very structured piece, kind of a little bit more dry or boring, boring, not as creative. If I would have just let it go, like free write and then, you know, gone along and done the revisions. Um, so I think it could result in some less creative uh, content. When you, when you free yourself to um, uh, just start writing things, you can turn out to have a, a, a new idea can start to present itself as you're writing. Mm -hmm. um, depending on what you're writing in, like again, if you're writing bullets and then you write a bullet that you're like, I don't know how that fits in, maybe that's actually the beginning of some second piece, or maybe it helps you take a different angle on what you're doing. So even just getting things down on paper and looking at them or putting them aside and coming back the next day um, 
can, you now you've got a little bit more perspective or your brain was working behind the scenes. Um, so you're, you're discovering something for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, letting it sit for whatever time period, if it's overnight or a couple of hours is um, a helpful tool as well. I, that perspective can help you um, add a new bullet point <laughs> or, um, you know, kind of start the editing process if, if that's, if that's ready, if you're ready for that. Right, right, right. I like working in different media sometimes. So I'll, I'll, if I'm really, really having trouble getting something out, I will open up a different app on my computer. Like I'll use the Apple Notepad app instead of using a Google Doc, which I would ordinarily use to be able to share and collaborate. Um, or I'll take a, a pad of paper and write in that, or I'll go to a different room and write in a different space, all of those things. And then I think that can also work in the editing process too. If you, if you take it from one form to another form, then that the act of taking it over from one place to another um, can help you um, as you're, as you're rewriting it, you're crap, you're, you're smoothing or refining or adding in new things. Yeah, I think that's totally true. I, I definitely have found that to be the case if I've handwritten something and then I'm, you know, typing it. Um, your brain's thinking of it a different way when you're typing it than when you're writing it. And yeah, you, you definitely can shape it differently in that way and new ideas come to you. There are pens that I really don't like using and I find that I don't think as well with them. And for me, that is typically a, a ballpoint, a blue ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't, I don't know if it's the color. I don't know. If it's the ballpointness, there's little metal ballpoints in particular. A, a gel ink is better. So, but everyone has to find their own way. Right, right. and I like a, a real, like sort of soft uh, ballpoint <laughs> blue. Oh, do you? Okay. The opposite of you. <laughs> <laughs> and the really, really super fine point. Then I, those are tiny little scritchy ideas. I don't like those. I like a big yeah. fat idea. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. If I could write, if I could write a novel in a sharpie, yeah, that that would be the thing. Maybe that's what I should try. Pull out a sharpie. You need a lot of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Big thoughts. Very yes. Good. Well, so how do we want to, what, what parting thoughts do we have for folks on, on the topic of, or the value of a shitty draft? Right. So if you're stuck with something, if you're, if you need to get something out and, and um, whatever it is, if it's, if you're feeling held back on it and it's important to you, don't feel bad about that. Know that you are not you are in no way the only writer um, who thinks that. I mean, people who've written great novels and long books and all sorts of things, they, they you read so often about how they um, think, okay, now I'm done. Now I, I have no more things to write. I can't do it anymore. So know that you, you aren't alone, but also know that you can do it. You're going to be able to. And, uh, and the things you need to do are to decide to do it. Say, look, for 10 minutes, I'm just going to write. Just even pick 10 minutes and just get going. And then maybe stop, maybe stop after 10 minutes and walk away and then make sure you come back. But, but um, be, you know, be true to yourself. If you say, I'm gonna only have to do this for 10 minutes, you go ahead and do that. Or you, you do your 10 minutes and you're like, actually, I feel like I really need to go. I mean, if you, whatever's working for you, you go with it, try different things. Yeah, and uh, at the end of it, whatever you've written, um, don't focus on the things that are wrong about it. Because if you've written a ton, there's going to be, there's going to be grammatical mistake, mistakes, there's going to be errors. Don't focus on that. Focus on finding the, you know, the hidden gems of ideas that, you know, really become the piece. Um, they're in there and, uh, you know, they're no, you're not going to find them unless you sit down and start writing. And then when you've gotten into a little bit of place and you refine it a little further, um, find someone that you trust who can give you feedback in a, in a constructive way, not a, eh, boy, you really don't know this, but find a person that you trust and who shares your goals and who is not competing with you. I think that maybe is how writers groups get a bad rap, um, uh, where people are knocking each other down as a way to defend themselves. So find someone that you do trust and then um, let them help you. Um, don't be shy. And they will probably be great, you know, happy to be able to be of any help at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, go and start a shitty first draft. Do it today. And we'll see you next time uh, and maybe have a name for our series. We hope. <laughs> Ciao. Bye, everyone. <laughs>